So, you might have been wondering where my coverage of Air India 171's preliminary report has been for the past week. Well, I've been a tad bit sick. But ever since the preliminary report came out, I've had this nagging feeling of deja vu. I feel like I've read this report before. This has happened before. So I've spent the last couple of days diving through my personal cache of air crash investigation reports to see if my cold addled brain was hallucinating or to see if I was actually onto something. And then I found it. Well, scraps of information from around the web that told quite a disturbing story. I wasn't hallucinating after all. So what is this video and what is it not? The first part of this video will be a reconstruction of Air India 171 and a factual retelling of its preliminary report. The second half of this video will be the story of two 767s, one United and one Delta, which are eerily similar to the story of Flight 171. This I think puts the Air India 171 story in some historical context. Worst case scenario, we learn something about two obscure incidents that most people have forgotten. And that's what this channel is all about. Here is what this video will not be. I am not claiming to have cracked the code with Air India 171 or anything like that. No one outside of the NTSB and AAIB knows exactly what transpired in that cockpit. With that, let's get started. On the 12th of June 2025, an Air India 787 was on the ground at Ahmedabad Airport getting ready for a flight to London's Gatwick Airport. The plane which had to make the intercontinental trek with 230 passengers was loaded with 54 tons of fuel, pushing the jet close to its max takeoff weight. A little bit after noon, they pushed back and started to taxi to the active runway. ATC asked if they'd need the whole runway for the departure, and the pilot said that they would. I mean, the jet was heavy. Once at the end of the runway, they made their final checks and everything looked good. So they pushed both engines to take off power, and the jet started to gallop down the runway. At 8.08 and 33 seconds UTC, they hit their V1 speed, just as planned. Then, two seconds later, it was time to rotate. As the plane lifted off, the computers confirmed that the plane was in the air, and the air ground sensors transferred to the air mode. As the jet climbed out at a speed of 180 knots, engine 1 started to roll back, then engine 2. This was because the engines were being starved as fuel, as the fuel cutoff switches had been transitioned from the run to the cutoff state. In the cockpit, one of the pilots, we don't know who, was heard asking, quote, Why did you cut off? The other pilot responded with, I did not do so. As the jet was bleeding airspeed, the RAT or the Ram Air Turbine deployed to give the pilots basic electrical and hydraulic power to keep control of the plane. In the cockpit, 10 seconds after the fuel cutoff switches had been flipped, one of the pilots flipped the switch back to the run position. Now, as per the code of the 787, when someone moves the switches from the cutoff to run in flight, the FADEC, or the Full Authority Digital Engine Control Computers, which are kind of like the brain of the engine itself, has one mission, initiate a relight and manage thrust recovery on said engine. The EGT values or the exhaust gas temperature values for both engines started to rise, indicating that they were on the verge of being relit. The core of engine 1, which up to this point had been slowing down, stopped slowing down and gradually started to spool back up as the FADEC slowly increased fuel flow to the engine to sustain ignition. Engine 2, while it had relit, was unable to arrest the slowing of its core. The FADEC on engine 2 kept pulsing fuel into the core in a desperate attempt to increase thrust from engine 2, but flight 171 had run out of time. It was barely off the ground when the engines died, so they had little to no buffer to initiate and carry out a successful relight. In short, they needed altitude, and that's the one thing that they did not have. Flight 171 slammed into a med school downwind of the runway. 241 people on board and 19 people on the ground were killed. This crash shook the world. It was the first hull loss of a 787. But as always, theories were plentiful right after the crash. Some people thought that it was a bird strike, others a manufacturing defect, another group suspected fuel contamination, and another cohort suspected maintenance issues. Therefore, with bated breath, we waited for the preliminary report. But as you know, the preliminary report gave us more questions than answers. It came to light that someone had moved the fuel cutoff switches in the cockpit, and the one question on everyone's lips was, well, why would a pilot do that? 
See, we don't have the information to answer that question. We don't know anything about what the pilots' lives were like, what they ate, how much they slept, if they had any interpersonal conflicts that might have compromised their decision making. We just don't have the data to draw any conclusions, good or bad. The one thing that we can do is to look back at history to see why other pilots have done the exact same thing that the pilots of Air India Flight 171 did to see if history repeats or if it rhymes. With all of that being said, this is the story of United Airlines, tail number November 609, Uniform Alpha. The year is 1986. It's the 31st of March and a United Airlines 767 with 192 people on board is getting ready for the short hop over to Denver from LAX. As with Air India 171, everything was normal prior to takeoff. The jet lined up with the runway. Which one? I don't know because there's barely any information out there about this incident. The pilots pushed the engines to take off power and they started heading down the runway. They hit their V1 speed, their rotate speed, and then their V2 speed. They were airborne and as the jet was climbing, they retracted the gear. Another textbook takeoff. As the 767 climbed through 3000 feet, the pilots got a warning. EEC failure on engine 1. The EEC, or the Electronic Engine Control, is a predecessor of the FADEC that we talked about in Air India 171's engines. So as per his training, the pilot of the United 767 hit the EEC switches, turning them off and giving him full manual control of the engines. Then engines 1 and 2 flamed out one after the other. You see, the pilot had flipped the fuel cutoff switches instead of hitting the EEC switches. The EEC switches were right next to the fuel cutoff switches. They were on the throttle console and these two sets of switches were just two inches apart from each other. Now as with Air India 171, I was confused as to why a pilot would do something like this, especially an experienced pilot with over 18,000 hours of flying. And that was answered when I found the final report. Okay, calling it a final report is generous. It was about four pages of text. And the first page describes what happened in literally two sentences. But at the bottom of the page, you see one important bit of information. Physical impairment, hypoglycemia slash diet, hyphen pilot and command. The pilot had low blood sugar. If you look up the symptoms of low blood sugar, you can see that some of the symptoms include lightheadedness, dizziness, and difficulty concentrating. With that one bit of information, the story of the United Airlines 767 makes total sense. You go from, how could have someone done this, to, ah, oh, that makes sense. Now, initially, I was going to end this video right here, but while researching this video, I found out that this had happened for a third time. This time on a Delta 767, also out of LAX bound for Cincinnati. I don't know what's going on with LAX. Now I'm not going to give you the whole song and dance that they lined up and took off, because you have things to do and places to be. But like before, Flight 810 got an EEC warning, and like before, they accidentally turned the engines off. They fell from 2,000 feet to 500 feet, and they were able to get both engines relit. Unlike the United crew who opted to land the plane as soon as possible, these guys decided to carry on to Cincinnati. The jet was powerless for about one minute. What's crazy about this incident is that after all of this happened, they basically told the passengers that they had accidentally turned the engines off and the pilot started that message with the sentence, I guess you're wondering about all the quiet. All these 1980s close calls obviously spooked the FAA, so they wanted guards on the fuel switches pronto. Here's a quote from a Washington Post article. The agency's Seattle office has given airlines 10 days to install a guard cover over the fuel cutoff switch, which the captain of Delta Airlines Flight 810 told federal officials he mistakenly hit shortly after takeoff from Los Angeles on Tuesday. FAA spokeswoman Judy Nauman said yesterday that the switch guard was ordered as an interim measure while the agency explored a more permanent solution, such as ordering a redesign of the instrument panels. Boeing spokesman John Wheeler said that the switch modification is simple and can be performed at an airport. I'm sure our guys are considering what permanent changes can be made." End quote. The point I'm making is that what happened to Air India 171 has happened multiple times. It is possible for a pilot with the best intentions to make a really, really bad mistake without intending to do so. However, it must be noted that on the 787, the FADEX switches are nowhere near the cutoff switches. So in the case of Air India 171, something else had to have transpired. 
So the one takeaway from this video is that we'll need to wait till the final report to know exactly what happened. There's got to be a smoking gun and what that smoking gun is, we'll have to wait. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. I'll catch you guys next time. Stay safe.